we got to talk about the ban list fallout. Are you ready to talk about the ban list fallout? Ew, you got something on your head. He was dirty. I got this from New York. He can't be dirty. I'm going to have to give him a bath. A bubble bath. This ban list makes me hard. Let's dive on into it, shall we? All the new subscribers who don't know about the Ultra Ball joke are going to probably be really creeped out. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the most Avery LR32 here. I have to make sure I don't raise my arms too high because this is a workout shirt. Y'all don't need to be seeing what we're working with, but <laughs> that's so weird. Guys, destroy the ever-living boo-boo. Stay off that like and subscribe button so we can keep on climbing even higher the 1K ladder because we're already in the 1400 ladder. Because one day I would like to hit 2,000 subscribers and not have to sell pictures of Twix toes on certain websites i don't actually do that but wouldn't that be something if i did you know i can make some extra money times are tough right now economy's hard the other thing that's hard is me because we got a new ban list and guess what shifter's still at three <laughs> like konami fumbles the ball and also like throws a touchdown at the same time, and it absolutely blows my mind. Also, side note, be sure you hit that ding-dong notification bell because we've also got a market watch coming up tomorrow. Just make sure that you're notified when we upload. You know I post like four or five videos and in like one day after we get a new list. But anyways, uh, Shifter's still at three. Now, I wanted to talk about like the whole balance fallout, things that I'm happy about, things that I'm not, because now that I've had time to go for a run, work out, and kind of think about it, I, I feel like I've got my mind made up on this. So... A lot of people are upset about the fact that Link, Karibo, Baron, and Borload are banned because they're like, you should be hitting the Snake Eye cards. What a lot of people, I think, don't realize is that Link, Karibo, Borload, Savage, and Baron were all part of, like, the end board for Snake Eyes, which, if you think about it in 2024, that's kind of an anomaly, and it's really kind of odd because... If you look at all the decks right now in the meta, they're not really putting up a lot of negates. Like, everybody was like, especially in like 2019, 2020 and stuff, people were like, oh, you just put up 50 negates, break my board, blah, blah, blah. They put up 10,000 damage and negates on the board. And, you know, like what everybody was saying about Master Duel, aka, am I past the minute mark? Yes, aka Master Shits. <laughs> um, now they are, one, hurting the end board of pure Snake Eyes or even Snake Eyes Cash Tira by banning Borlo Savage and Baron, and then they're also hitting the end board by banning Link Karibo because they would step into Link Karibo. It's better than Anima because the arrow points down. So now the question becomes, what is your end board using these cards? Yes, you can do Masquerade, which could connect you to Little Knight or Apollosa if you don't make that on your first turn. But other than that, like besides an Apollosa, you're not really doing much. You're putting up interruptions because you're going to have access to Raging Phoenix, Zalantis, Promethean, all that fun stuff. But you're not putting up hard negates outside of like if you open up hand traps, right? Which the deck will probably still play like 15, maybe 18 of depending on what the meta calls for. Um, but people are really upset about that. But I think it's because they don't realize that, hey, these cards are being used in the end board. Like Jet Synchron is no longer going to be a thing in uh, Snake Eyes, no matter what variant you play, whether it's the Cash Tier version, Fire King version. I think the Fire King version is actually going to be the best version um, because at least from some of the builds I've seen before I started recording, they weren't even playing Jet Synchron. So you can get away with playing a different sub engine that's not Cash Tira or even play Cash Tira cards, just kind of change your strategy a little bit. So that way you can still use like Unicorn and Fenrir as like extra deck interruption and banish interruption respectively you have hand traps and you go from there but at least the day of today being when we got the list i do think that the fire king version is going to take off and be the better version overall and of course people are upset about summon limit i'm looking at it here which is why i'm probably looking strange um summon limit being banned like i don't know why people are upset about this honestly because Tempi Dragon auto lost to Summon Limit. Like, I would play against Voiceless Voice, they'd flip up Summon Limit, and, like, you just lost because you needed more than two summons in order to make a board. And that goes for any deck. If you need more than two summons to make some sort of comeback against the opponent with their built board, how is that fair? Now, I'm sure some people are going to make the argument, of, oh, well, stun, you know, if it's played in a stun deck, blah, blah, blah. But it's the same thing as Mystic Mind. Like, Mystic Mine got banned because of the fact that all of the meta decks were using Mystic Mine as like a sub-engine 
yeah, as part of their non-engine package, in case they were behind the eight ball in advantage, they could just mystic mind the opponent, and then they could just keep on drawing cards, either mill the opponent out, or just keep drawing until they had enough resources to break whatever board that the opponent had. It really wasn't fair. If you look at Voiceless Voice, they get set up with Skull Guardian, Novox, the Continuous Trap, and Continuous Spell, and then if they have a summon limit too, like, they have an Omni Negate in the form of Skull Guardian, they have targeting protection with the, 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 sprite blessing whatever it is the continuous spell and then they can pop your cards with the trap or they can just summon another monster like that's not healthy Yu-Gi-Oh. it doesn't matter what deck you play it's just that stun is a byproduct because it plays that shit card it needed to go you know konami seems to really be hank hankering really be hunkering down i think is the right term i was saying hankering like i'm hungry or something um by like hitting rivalry goes in antique boo to one and if cards like rivalry and all that were still an issue i think that we would see them banned anti-spell followed that trend it went to one i think that we could very well one day see cards like rivalry and anti-spell they become an issue just being banned like summon limit i think the konami looked at summon limit and were like this card's got to be taken out back and shot because there is no way that combo decks, which let's just be honest, in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, basically every deck is a combo deck, whether it's mid-range or otherwise, does more than two summons in a turn. It's not fair. Now, if you still want to have that type of feeling, I guess, you could just play Quiet Life. Quiet Life is a continuous spell that says uh, if either player normal summons, then they can't special summon that turn. If either player special summons, then they can't normal summon. But you got to activate it at the start of your main phase one. So if you're playing Stun, you activate Quiet Life, you summon, I don't know, Inspector Border, and you move on with your day. So you have options available to you. Is it a good substitute? No. But it's also a card that, like... It reminded me of Imperial Order. Like, you just flipped it up once they tried to play a spell, and if you didn't have a way to stop it, you were just screwed. And then Limited, uh, Protos. Uh, Protos is honestly, like, kind of crazy. I think that we're going to see Protos see a lot of play. I don't think, like, Sword Soul is going to come back or anything. I think Sword Soul has been power crept. But Protos back in uh, the, meta, uh, the meta, especially with, what's the card, like, Nemesis Archfiend or something. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what that card can do. Thunder, uh, Title. Uh, is cool. I mean, we got all the Dragon Rulers back, especially as someone who's been playing the game for 16 years, um, since 2008, two weeks before the Fusion deck name was changed to the Extra deck. Um, it's going to be fun to see, like, if anything with Tempai Dragon comes out, playing the Dragon Rulers, or even just Dragon Rulers in general. I mean, all the babies are at three, and all the big dragons are at one, so, like, you go back to 2014 and see how they played and just edit it from there. Um, and then Colossus back at one. I mean, we're basically back in toss format now, if you think about it. I mean, Colossus is fine. I really don't think like it's that broken anymore. Kirin, uh, that's to support the new Magic Specter stuff. It's still bad. Anti spell we already talked about, and then Chicken Game to one is very interesting because yes, Droll is a card, but what's funny? Well, number one, what's funny is that Chicken Game when I checked a couple hours ago it was like over six dollars, which is funny. I don't know what it is now, but if you think about it, every deck in Yu-Gi-Oh now going into this new format is in theory thirty-five cards because you can play three Upstart Goblin and the Chicken Game. Plus, you can also play Pseudo Space. Pseudo Space basically just says, hey, banish a field spell from your grave. This card copies that card's effects. So you play Chicken Game in that, you're essentially playing two Chicken Game. So you can play the Chicken Game, pay a thousand draw, activate the Pseudo Space, pay another thousand, draw another card. So essentially, every deck now in Yu-Gi-Oh is playing 35 cards, which is very interesting when it comes down to ratios and stuff like that. Um, and then, of course, semi-limits. Armageddon Knight, especially with Orcus Sky Striker now, I'm pretty sure back at full power now, um, that's going to be interesting to see because now we can start making all the jokes of two things equals full Orcus combo again. Uh, maybe even play a Snake Eyes engine in it, like Snake or Snake Eyes Orcus Sky Striker and Delicious Memory at two is just kind of whatever. Um, Malicious at three, I think, is going to be interesting, especially with Armageddon Knight at two. You can summon it, dump the Malicious, and just start comboing. Harpoor, we already talked about. Terra Top, I really don't think it's a big deal because the Goblin cards, as cool as they are, I just don't think they have enough. And Engage, we already talked about. Um, I mean... Outside of basically feeling like we're back in toss format, which I didn't really play a lot of toss, um, I feel like I'm sort of indifferent about this list. If you didn't like last format, I think you're not going to like this format. Um, and I think that that just comes down to the fact that the Snake Eye stuff is very new. You know, similar to like with Super Heavy Samurai, they went after the Scarecrow Link because the new samurai stuff was just that good with the link. 
And I feel like Super Heavy was bit in a in a different position compared to like Snake Eyes now, because when the new Super Heavy stuff came out, we still had cash at full power. And if you look at some of the early results from that, you would see that it was basically just 50% cash tier, 50% Super Heavy. You had to play one of those two decks. If you didn't, you were going to have a very hard time. And so I think it was actually kind of a good thing that the super heavy link was hit because yes, cash was tier one, but basically people started playing six books, three Eclipse and three Book of Moon to out the Arise Heart. And it was still like, it wasn't a tier zero format by any means. There were other decks that could compete, um, but Arise Heart regardless was still very oppressive, but I think it was still a better format with Scarecrow gone. This ban list to me... It tells me a lot of things. For one thing, on the logistics side of it, why is Europe not getting it until the 22nd? You know, we saw that they didn't get speed dual midterm destruction. Now they're getting a ban list later. Are we going to see Konami of Europe? And this is the tinfoil hat theory, hear me out. But are we going to see Konami of Europe and Konami of America and Latin America split? Where we're going to have the OCG, dealing with the OCG territories, Japan, China, Korea, whatever. Then we have the TCG territory being uh, Latin America and the United States. And then Europe would technically be part of the TCG, but have their own ban list. If that's the route that they're going down, maybe they just have an event coming up. I, I don't know. But if that's the route that we're going to start seeing taking place, I'm very worried about the future of the game. Because for years, ever since the game's inception, the TCG has always been North America, Latin America, and Europe, Oceania, and all that. If you start throwing in different ban lists for each section of the world, it's going to run into issues, and it's going to make it feel like the the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! is more detached from everybody together, whereas like you want people to come together to play. You know what I mean? Like, the beauty of Yu-Gi-Oh! is making friends and coming together, whether it is you live in Oceania or you live in Jacksonville, Florida, you know, you can play the game together because it's the same format, you know, even OCG players to a lesser degree. So I really hope that that's not what they're planning with having different dates for the ban list. Like, what if down the line, like just as an example, North America, you get yours July 1st, Europe, you go into effect May 3rd, like they... That, again, it's a tinfoil hat theory, but that's what I'm really worried about with this. But overall, I think it's a nice, just, it's a fresh coat of paint. It's like Snake Eyes put some makeup on and at least doesn't look like uh, an SLUT. I'm afraid if I say it, I'll get demonetized. <laughs> but it's it's a nice refresh. And now I know that I'm going to go to YCS Indianapolis and I'll probably go to Nationals. Do keep in mind that this is going to most likely be our Nationals list. I don't see us getting another ban list till after Nats. Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Are you quitting the game? Are you taking a break? What you going to do, Sugar Boo Bear? Guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.